physically, emotionally, spiritually, to cherish her, to care for her, to help her flourish, to love her. And Callie, that means that you are promising today to make it your aim to see to the well-being of Brandon physically, emotionally, spiritually, to care for him, to encourage him, to help him flourish, to love him. And when you really understand what loving another person means, you see these are no small promises that you're about to make. They will be costly at times. At times, like, really costly. Getting this close and then staying this close to another human being is very challenging. Sometimes it's just inconvenient. Sometimes it can be maddeningly frustrating. And yet, in a, just a few moments, you're gonna be saying to each other, I promise, for better or worse, for richer or poorer, in sickness and in health, to love you and to not stop loving you until one of us dies. And the question today is, how in the world are you gonna do that? And the answer to that question is, with the help of God, your Heavenly Father. By God's active presence in your marriage, by His grace, providing the help and strength and wisdom and grace that you need, you need to remember today, God has made some vows too. He has promised both of you in Christ to provide everything you need for life, for godliness, for marriage. That's a promise that He's made to you. And there is no place that it's more needed than right here in your marriage. He has promised you, according to the riches of his grace, that he will supply all of your needs. One of my very favorite verses, you've probably heard me quote this in church a couple times. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? You see, there's another person present in your marriage beside just the two of you. And he has taken some vows, and he intends to keep them. And your job is to trust God for what he has said and to look to him for grace. 